Welcome back to Unlocked, guys. I'm so excited today. I, th- I mean, I say that every <laughs> episode, but <laughs> I have Caitlin Bristow on, and she lives here in Nashville. You may know her from The Bachelorette Season 11. Yep. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I'm honestly, okay, I'm not going to lie. I'm like excited for this. But I was so nervous about it. What? Because I felt like such an asshole when I did your podcast. Why? Because I never posted about it. And the reason I never posted about it was because I said something I wish I wouldn't have said. What? Really? Yes. And I felt like I've I've been so embarrassed. And so like, (laughs) I am so sorry. Oh my gosh. First of all, I'm sorry. (laughs) You can always just tell me if you wanted something taken out and I would have taken it right out. Well, it was... It was like when I was in the middle of like my whole relationship thing with my ex and called off my engagement, all that. We were like back and forth. Yeah. And I had said something about us at that time that made me, I can't remember. I just know it was something about the relationship part. And I think in a way I was kind of trying to make it work with him, but I maybe told you like, no, I'm done. Oh, shoot. Yeah. So it was something of that nature. And then I just never posted about it. And I felt That's like okay. such an asshole. No, you're forgiven. <laughs> That's, it takes a lot to piss me off. And uh, I don't think I even noticed you didn't post. So don't <laughs> even worry about it. Yeah. I was like, I, I felt get that. so bad. There's so many times uh, now where I look at the clip that I want to post to promote my um, podcast. Yeah. And I go... Oh, they probably wouldn't want to repost that. And then I like try and like put something in where they would want to repost it because yeah. it's true. When I, when I'm an open book all the time, yeah. I say dumb things all the time where I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, and then they always use that as the clip. And then I'm like, well, I don't want to share it. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're like, no, I'm good. So I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. I had to clear the air about that because I was literally mortified. I was like, oh, my, oh my gosh, God. you're sweet. No. And too, I was like, she's probably not going to want to do. I was like. All, oh I had gosh. all these scenarios in my head. Nope. Didn't even realize <laughs> you didn't do it and, and you're forgiven. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We've, now since we're past that. Yeah, we're good. Okay. So Bachelorette. Yes. On season 11. And we just said before we came on, I did. There was a time to where like I watched it religiously like yeah. everyone else I feel like. Yeah. And then it kind of just died off. Yeah. Um, but who was, who was on your season? Like who was like the final... Ben Higgins. Okay. Yes. Nick Vile, Sean Booth, yes. and Jared Haven. And you ended up with Sean. Yes. Okay. So how did that go down? Uh, well, first of all, I, it's so funny that those were the four guys. Cause I'm like, I'm still friends with most of them. <laughs> Who are you friends with? I'm friends with Ben, like really okay. good friends with Ben. I'm friends with Nick. Okay. I'm friends with Jared and Well also I've got a bone to pick with Nick because well he turned down my pod, he turned down my podcast. What? Yeah. Why? Exactly. Oh, that's interesting. Well, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He like he's he's a controversial guy and I think that's okay. I I consider myself to be controversial sometimes too, yeah. but um I wonder why you did you call him out? Did you ask why? I haven't yet. Let's but look him in the eyes right now. Yes. Why? Why, Nick? Why? Why did you? I don't know if that was the team or him. Well, you're still responsible for your team. Like well, my team asks me all the time. Yes. Um, and if I can't do it, there's a reason. But I don't. I usually don't just flat out say no unless I don't like someone. Yes, exactly. And I'm like, I don't know you, so if interesting. You don't like me, it's well. Let's for figure a it out. Exactly. Find out. <laughs> so okay, continue. So your friends would. Ben. Yes. Nick. Yes. And Jared. I'm friends with a lot of guy, guys from my season. It's clearly not Sean. Clearly not Sean. <laughs> I, at this point, I probably would be just because so much time has passed. And I've now for the first time, I didn't see him for four years and we both live in Nashville. Which is crazy. Crazy. And now I've run into him a couple times, but we still have yet to like say hello or anything. It's, really? Yeah. I Did it why. end poorly? Um. Yeah. 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 It did. It was... Because you it were was, engaged. Yeah, we were engaged. And it was really too bad how it all went down because um, we, you know, it just, I, I felt like this guy does not want to marry me. Like, really? no, I didn't feel like it at all. And we just both were a little toxy. Yeah. And it just got to a point where I was like, this is unhealthy. And we decided to break up. And when we did, he moved out. And then... At that point, we were broken up, and so I was talking to Jason, but when I first talked to Jason, and so many people that listen to my podcast are like, we know this story, Caitlin, but maybe (laughs) I have new listeners here, Um, but 
when we first started talking, he was actually like, I, he wanted to respect the boundaries and time that had passed. And I was like, I didn't even know he had a crush on me, to be honest with you at first. We were just talking as friends. And then we just kept talking and kept talking. And then Sean found out we were talking and was so mad at me. And I'm like, but we're broken up. So I know it sucks. But like at this point, you could honestly be talking to someone else too. And then two days later, he was all over the news with some girl in New York. And I was like, see, it sucks, but you can do it. (laughs) See, that's the thing is I feel like I went through that same thing with my ex and it was like just because mine's maybe more public right. or maybe just because you know about mine yeah doesn't make it any worse than you doing it silently right yeah that's i was i wasn't even really like i had not even crossed a line with jason yeah and and we were sean and i were broken up so yeah. for him to then go to new york and like publicly be with this girl and I was like, oh, is he so still he, with her? No, 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 no. That oh, was so like it wasn't a two even week, a good one. No, it was a two week thing. So, oh god. But again, this was all like four years ago. Yeah, and I genuinely, I know people say this, like, I will, I hope he's happy. I genuinely like yeah. cared about him so much that I, I actually hope he's happy. <laughs> no, one hundred percent. I yeah. say that same thing. It's yeah. like if I loved you, I yeah. will always love you. Yeah. Now. Doesn't mean I'm in love with you. Right. But if I loved you, I will always love you. Doesn't Absolutely. matter what happens. Doesn't matter. Like we all screw up. We can all be toxic. Yeah. We can, but like, I'll always love all you. my ex-boyfriends, all like 40 of them at this point <laughs> <laughs> being the bachelorette. But I honestly like can feel some sort of gratitude yeah. for them in all t- types of ways. So when you say you knew he didn't want to marry you, what how did you know? What were the feelings? What would happen? Because I guarantee you, there are a lot of people listening that have felt that yeah. way. Like, I want to be with this person, but I really don't think they want to be with me. Yeah, I started becoming like kind of um, like really immature in the relationship where I was like having tantrums and feeling like almost desperate. And I was like, ew, what? Yeah. Who am I? Why am I acting this way? And it, I realized it's because I was not getting something. And I was like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I was acting like a child. It was terrible. Um, and I realized it because I have a lot of tools in the belt. Um, and I was like, I need to go see family and people that ground me. So I went home to Canada and, uh, at a certain point I was like, I need you to come to Canada if we're going to work this out. Yeah. And he just wouldn't come. Really? Yeah. And I was like, okay, well he doesn't want to, you know, be here and he doesn't want to come see me or my family. And it was just too much of, oh, I don't want to fly out there and I don't want to do it. It just, it was just like kind of the proof that I needed. Yeah. But I don't know. It just felt like everything I did annoyed him. (laughs) It just felt, I don't know. It just, you could just tell. You can tell. And that's the thing. It's like when someone does kind things for you and they show up, you're like, okay, they really love me. Totally. So then when they're not doing those things, you're like, okay, maybe something's up. Something's not right with this. And I'm sure a lot of people can, maybe they don't want to admit it, but they can say it to themselves that when you are in that position, you start to become a shell of yourself and you start to act like maybe your childlike self and resort to this like kind of behavior that you're not proud of. And I did that for way too long in another relationship. And so this time I was like, no, I don't deserve this. Yeah. I got to get out. Well, yeah, because I will say like we've all been in that, whether it's heck, I know I resorted to like, okay, I'm going to like Insta stalk all the people that like you followed or that like I'm going to go down the rabbit hole. I and when you do that, you're robbing yourself. Absolutely. Anything good. Yeah, exactly. You're just you know that that's it's gone too far. There's obviously something wrong. Yeah. Figure it out for yourself. Dear God. So, okay. So y'all live in the same city Mm -hmm. and you've yet to speak. Would you like bury the hatchet if? Totally. Yeah. So why haven't you, if you've seen him, why haven't you gone up to him? It's just not the like right, um, I don't know, scenario or environment. Like I feel like he was at a restaurant that I was at. Yeah. He was like. I think he was on a date, I think. Oh. And I was with Jason and our friends. And, you know, at the at this point, too, because 
people even sent a message to Jason the other day saying like, how do you feel that Caitlin's always talking about her exes on podcasts? And he's like, well, it's kind of the world she came from. And if I was the bachelor, I'd have to talk about all my exes too. Like that's just, it is part of my life. Yeah. And especially people who know who I am know exactly who he is because we ended up together and now we live in the same city and people want to know what happened still. And so it's like, it's kind of just natural conversation, but it's just never been the right environment to be like, Hey, you want to talk about this? Like, I don't <laughs> like, know. Can we bury the hatchet? Can we want to bury the hatchet? I would yeah. just, I don't even know what I would say. Cause it, I just want to be like, how's your dog? <laughs> He's a cute golden. <laughs> how's your dog? How's your dog? <laughs> oh my gosh. That's amazing. Well, and too, Talking about your exes, that's been something that like, if the person you're with raises a red flag about that, right? that's like a red flag to me. Right. Because yeah. it shows that you're insecure. Yes. That you don't believe in this relationship as much as you should. Right. And we all get to where we're at because Absolutely. of our past experience. I mean, Jason was on The Bachelorette. What that's season hilarious. of The Bachelorette was he on? He was, oh, I don't even remember. Um, Who was The Bachelorette? Becca Kufrin. Oh, yes. Yeah. And he was like in her top three and he was like in love with her. And it, I mean, we talk about her all that. We hang out with her all the time. Like we love her. See, that's, that's her. I don't know if I'll ever get in a healthy, like how yeah. can you hang out with someone that you know slept with? They the didn't sleep together. With? He, um, she sent him home before the fantasy suite. Oh, okay. But they definitely would have, and that still wouldn't have bothered me because I've been in that situation and I know what it's like. <gasps> I know. And again, like 10 years ago, I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't be able to say that. I've just done so much therapy. <laughs> um, and I just understand the weird and sexual wor- world that is the Bachelor franchise yeah. that it doesn't, it really doesn't bother me. And I okay. think I saw that that kind of blew up my relationship with Sean where like he couldn't mm. get over things. And I'm like, ah, it's just, you got to let those things go if yeah. you're going to have a healthy relationship. And I, we both let it go. Wow. Yeah. And too, so he's like in finance. Yeah. He's like in the smart world. Oh, he's a genius. <laughs> he's so smart. Okay. And so does he live here in Nashville? Yeah, we live together. Okay. Yeah. And we kind of talked a little bit before. You're just kind of like taking your time with wedding stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's so bad because I have so many different thoughts on this. Yeah. On one side, I like get so um, kind of frustrated if it's a troll being like, clearly he doesn't want to marry you or you don't want to marry him or blah, I get annoyed. But if it's genuine fans that have been just so, you know, invested in our relationship, yeah. I actually do feel bad because I'm like, I've opened up my world to them. They're just excited. Yeah. And then, so when I say things like, yeah, we both are putting our careers first and that might sound scary to some people, or you might be like, oh gosh, that's a red flag to us. We're like, well, we just haven't gotten there. And yeah. like, it works for in, you. In our opinion, we probably will. And if we don't, that's really sad, but yeah. like we probably will. Yeah. And so we, yeah, you know, we, I've thought about eloping. Um, Jason's more of like a traditional wants a wedding. Yeah. Um, but the more that we talk about it, the more we get asked, the more we look at wedding budgets, yeah. the it, more we're like, sickening. maybe we do elope. It really is. It is. And, and it's really for everyone else. Yeah. And I just bought a Bronco, so I'm poor. <laughs> Yes, Bronco, I which I am so jealous of because oh, I have wanted it for years. Me too. It's years. been on my vision board since 2011. Stop. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. You should print out a picture and put it you know in what? your mirror I'm doing it. so you can see it every day. And then one day you'll have it and you'll be like, I'm broke too now. <laughs> I'm broke too now. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. That's amazing. People actually, a couple of people got mad at me for flaunting a Bronco in this, in, you know, in this time in the world. Yeah. And, uh, I was like, you know what? <laughs> I am allowed to buy yeah. myself something nice. I am so frugal. Yeah. And it, th- you wouldn't get mad if I was flaunting a million dollar wedding if we exactly. spent the, you know, but it's something I did for myself and I feel really proud of it. To and too, as a woman and having a career of your own yeah. and being able to do that, 
It's like you shouldn't. I'm sorry, but you don't hold yourself back for anyone. No, and not to justify it even not, more, but I my house was dirt cheap when I bought it, <laughs> and I'm like I'm just proud of how I've handled my finances, and so that was like a treat yourself, Caitlin. Yeah, and two, it's really I'm sorry it's an investment. It is. It's an investment. It's an investment. It's not one of those cars you drive off the lot and it goes down. It goes up. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And it's just, you should never be made to feel bad about. I know. That's my thing. It's like, if people are making you feel bad, that's their insecurities. There's like literally one person that made me feel bad. So many people were like, I'm so happy for you. So yeah. I need to shut up. Yeah. Hey, it's the <laughs> one comment that sticks though, which is sad. I know. But it's the one comment it's that the sticks. Worst. Oh the my worst. gosh. Okay. So that is, you're just kind of like coasting. You're putting yeah. careers which is awesome, though. I, I do understand that that is kind of a problem if you're not planning a wedding. It's just more like, I it almost feels like we're children and we're like, well, we're not going to do it then if everybody's going to ask about it. Like, that's how it feels sometimes. I don't know. I I love him. He loves me. We have a very good relationship. Yeah. And yeah, we, I don't know. We've just been engaged for a hot minute. <laughs> But how long has it been? A year and a half. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's a that's a hot I mean, minute. we have we have done little things for wedding planning here and there. Yeah. I like I I was really into it. We were really into wedding planning at the beginning. And I honestly think we were just a little turned off by people taking advantage mm-hmm. of slapping the term wedding on something and then yeah. bumping up the price. And yeah. Jason plays so fair. And I think we just got annoyed. For sure. Yeah. And to the Bachelor franchise as a whole does not make that process easy. I don't feel like, or like mentally, emotionally, just because the majority of them don't last. Yeah. You know, so it's like, there has to be a lot of pressure associated with that. Yeah. And so there was the other day there was, or I guess like a week or two ago, there was an article that came out stating Caitlin Bristow hints that she and fiance Jason, I don't know how to say his last name. Tardic. Tardic, have uncomfortable conversations to prioritize growth. Yeah, we do. We're, that was a headline? Yes. No way. It was. I wonder where that came from. Well, Does it say? Let's see. I'm trying to think of if it was from my podcast. You or... wrote on Instagram. Oh, oh, On that. February 17th. Yeah, 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 yeah. Happy couples aren't just the ones posting kissing selfies. They're the ones having uncomfortable conversations, helping each other overcome trauma and ugly crying to save their relationship. Mm, Yeah, I really felt that (laughs) Um, because I'm not like, it's actually too bad. I'm really not a super affectionate person. Mm -hmm. I show love in many other ways and I'm just not kissy all over. Like I'm just not, I wish I was a little more. Does, okay, and I say this out of my own personal experience, Yeah, I have not been that way because of my own trauma. Uh, so I've, I've looked into that. <laughs> I've looked into that. <laughs> I did a whole week um, in California at a inner child retreat where for seven days I did 13 to 15 hours of therapy a day. Oh. And no phone, no computer, no books. Like so no kind of like, guys, what I've talked about with on-site. Yeah. Have you gone on-site? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes. It's like that, okay. but I think a little heavier. Okay. So I have learned so much about myself, and I don't think it's anything trauma for me. I think I just... Well, okay. I, should, I shouldn't lie. A <laughs> small part of it probably is because I'm always scared I'm going to lose somebody. Yeah. And the more I show love, the more I'm like letting myself be vulnerable and open and the more chance I have of getting hurt. Yes, that is a small part. Yeah. Um, but I'm also just not an affectionate person. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so I think it's a little bit of both probably. Do you, have you, like, do you go out of your way to make yourself feel uncomfortable? Probably. To do it so that you, you get what I'm saying? Like, oh, do I do, yeah. So that I can force at least yourself show. To, yeah. 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 I will find myself being like, gosh, I really should because Jason loves physical touch. So yeah. I should go out of my way to do that. And it's not like I'm like, uh, to do it. Like, uh, yeah. I'm just like, I have to remind myself to do it's it. It's not something that it just doesn't natural. come naturally. Yeah. Like I love showing him in so many other ways. That's what I was about to say. Whether it's like 
gift giving or acts of service. It's definitely acts of service. Yeah. I love cooking for him his favorite meals. I love, and we both do this for each other, waking up and like bringing the other person coffee in the oh. morning, like total. Th- I love showing love in the, that way. Yeah. I love writing. Like if I could write him a note or a card, yes. um, I'm much better with, well, I'm actually, I'm terrible with words saying them out loud, but I'm really good at writing them down. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just stuff like, like we're really thoughtful to each other. Okay. Yeah. But I'm just, yeah, I have a tough time being, so with that post and with us, I don't know, I guess I'm always kind of open about relationships not being perfect or yeah. me having ups and downs, anxiety, depression, happy times, sad times. So everyone was like speculating a breakup. And mm-hmm. I, again, I get it because I don't post all the time. He's not yeah. posting all the time. We both have our own things going on. We're not planning a wedding. And so <laughs> I was like, I get it. But I wanted to, to let people know, like, just because we're not making out on Instagram and doing like really cute kissing selfies doesn't mean we're not prioritizing our relationship yeah. in some way. We can still prioritize our work and we can prioritize ourselves and we can prioritize each other. And that's what we're doing. We're really working on ourselves Mm -hmm. and we are ugly crying through hard things. And we are trying to like make things work and do because we want to. Exactly. And to that kind of like hits home for me in another area. Cause I remember with my ex, I would get so pissed off Yeah, because we'd be like in the middle of like the worst fight ever. And then he would like, post some photo of us on Instagram yeah. and be all lovey-dovey. And I'm like, where the yeah, hell did that. this come from? I refuse to do that. Yeah. yeah. I was literally like, where the hell did this come from? Yeah. Like, we're not even speaking in person, right. but there's photos being posted. Yeah. See, and that's when when uh, Sean and I broke up, they are like, but look at all these photos. And I'm like, that doesn't mean that didn't happen. No. We didn't post them in our lowest moments. We posted them when we were feeling in love. Yeah. And those were real moments. Mm-hmm. And that isn't fake. And same with like, that's with me and Jason. We don't, if we are in an argument and not feeling good, we're not going to go and post just because people are speculating. Yeah. We're going to post when we're in a good place. We're going to, I talk about on my podcast when we're not in a good place. Yeah. Like it's just, I'm just, I like raw, honest transparency. Mm -hmm. And there is a line as well because some things should be kept private and Mm -hmm. some things people don't need to know, but what I want to share, I'm going to share. Exactly. And to that's, and that, that line is hard to very, yeah, because you want to have respect for your relationship, but also your job is to be open and honest and vulnerable. So how do you find that happy balance? I I think I've got it. (laughs) I just find it by being very present in what's happening in my life Mm -hmm. and, and knowing when to share and when to not share. Yeah. Having communication with Jason about where we're at and if we're comfortable, like sharing things on social media. Yeah. Um, I just think it's about communication and, and just having a lot of self-awareness. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that's hard. Yeah. Because a lot of it times really you don't is. find that self-awareness after you've screwed up. That's true. You I'm know? very self-aware and even in, like I'll be having a meltdown and I'm like, oh, I'm having a meltdown. I'm like an out-of-body experience. I'm a child right now. Okay. I got to get out of it. Like I'm so self-aware. <laughs> okay. That's what I need some of that. So gosh, well just you're, if you're already doing therapy and you're oh, going yeah. to onsite and you're think of, how old are you? 25. I was going to say 25. Yeah. Think about, I'm 37. Think about where you're going to be in 10 years if you're working on yourself the way you are right now. Yeah. I w- at 25, I was a f- <laughs> degenerate. Like, <laughs> degenerate. I, I was like blacking out at nightclubs and oh, like serving God. at restaurants and like not giving a shit about anyone but myself. It was terrible. Well, but look, it got you to where you're at today. <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah, great. I'll do it again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You'll have fun again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was bad, but but if you're you're on a good yeah. path, well, okay. yeah, I'm you trying. Are. I'm trying. You were. You're, you're going to be freaking incredible at 35. Hey, I hope so. You like, will. That's my goal. You and will. And too, I'm learning to more and more every day. Like even relationship wise, mm-hmm. like I don't have a type. First off, great. Like no type whatsoever. Yeah. None. It's my dad Z. laughs about it. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, we never know who's fans going to be with today. Like <laughs> never know. That's but. Fun. I'm learning too that like a relationship is so much more 
than just like all this stuff that's preached to us, you know, it's yeah. just like, oh, you want to be Instagram cute and famous oh. and this and that. And I'm like, no, I want the tough conversations. Yep. I want someone who's going to show up for me yeah. when I don't ask them to, Yeah, you know, when they just know, Hey, I need to show up Yeah, like that for me. I'm like, that's the most attractive thing. Yeah. And screw what anyone else thinks. Going into 2023, I promised myself that I was going to eat a little cleaner, you know, day by day we'll get cleaner and cleaner because you can ask any of my friends. I am a junk food eater, bar food, all the good things. <laughs> but Green Chef has truly helped me to kind of navigate this new lifestyle that I'm living. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well with dinners that work for you and not the other way around. I don't want to spend tons of time slaving away in the kitchen and it's just time that I really don't have. Green Chef makes everything super easy with meals being delivered directly to your door. Everything is already portioned out. You have all the right ingredients and you know exactly how much to use. Another thing that I love is Green Chef is offering 10 minute lunches. Each week's menu includes two convenient, low prep and nutritious lunch recipes ready in just 10 minutes. And there's absolutely no cooking required. It's perfect for when you're on the go or pressed for time at the office. So I really hope that you guys will try Green Chef because it's absolutely amazing and it also has options for every lifestyle keto paleo vegan vegetarian fast fit mediterranean and gluten-free go to greenchef.com slash unlocked 60 and use code unlocked 60 to get 60 percent off plus free shipping Again, go to greenchef.com slash unlocked 60 and use my code unlock 60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. I do really believe that I have that. Yeah. Like Jason is an incredible partner. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you say has been y'all's hardest thing to overcome? Mm. We, we've been kind of lucky with not having like any huge things to overcome. Like, yeah. and that's like, we're really lucky for that. There has not been like a really rock bottom overcome moment for us. Yeah. Um, but I would say, uh, honestly, probably trying to figure out like, what are we doing? Yeah. Like, wh- why aren't we prioritizing this wedding um, has probably been the hardest thing. And we're kind of in it, but also it's not, it hasn't been like, that challenging. We yeah. just have honest, really open communication about it. We did an eight hour therapy one day. Wow. And got to talk so candidly and in from such a vulnerable place. Mm-hmm. And we got so far in those eight hours of, and that's, that was like probably the most thing we've had to overcome was just it being in a place where we're like, what's going on with yeah. us? And then doing eight hour th- hours of therapy helped us Yeah, <laughs> and helped us overcome it. So I can never preach therapy enough. I just, I know my that's gosh. the thing is like, and that's the scary part about therapy though, especially as a couple is you're either going to leave together or you're yeah. going to leave separated. Yeah. Like it's one or the other. Yeah. Because it's so you're in such a, like you feel that you're in a safe place to just throw it all out there mm-hmm. and you've got someone that's sitting there that's going to kind of be the navigator of yeah. the whole situation. Yeah. Actually, now that I think about it, one of the things that we have to overcome is how open I am and how he's more private. Yes. Because he thinks I should protect more the relationship where I'm like, but I'm so open and I want to talk yeah. about things. And I also love when somebody at home can take away something from it mm-hmm. and understand that they go through this too and that I'm a human and they're human. And yeah. That's kind of been hard to overcome too. See, and that's where I am because I'm a very open person yeah. and it's like my family members are like, uh, could you not? Yeah. yeah. Like you yeah. have to keep a little, you right. know, and I'm just like, it's when I see the impact that it has, yeah. I'm like, you know what? It's worth it. If me going through what I've gone through makes it easier on someone else yeah. and helps them, then I'm willing to go through it. Yeah, I agree. So I'm, but I'm the same way. I'm just like word vomit. I like that about you though. Yeah. Anything, <laughs> everything. Yeah. Sorry. I'll S- apologize later. Samesies. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> okay. So 
Bachelor, Bachelorette, the whole franchise as a whole. Obviously, Chris Harrison, no longer a part of it. Yeah. And I'm just going to say it makes me sad. Yeah. Because like he was incredible. He was incredible. Yeah. He made the show. Yeah. Like he. So I haven't watched it really since. Yeah. I watched a little bit whenever you were co-hosting. Yeah. And that was awesome. Yeah, it was fun. But, you know, it's just. Chris Harrison leaving, COVID hitting. Yeah. It was not the same. Well, I always said that that show wouldn't be the same without him, even before everything went down, because yeah. there was going to be a time where he was going to retire. He wanted to retire in his 40s. He's, I think, 46 or 7 now. Like, he yeah. would have retired anyways. And I do think, I do think Jesse Palmer does a really good job um, at being the host. But yeah, it's, you're so, anyone that comes in after Chris Harrison is kind of set up for oh, yeah, failure it's, it's because tough. he was there from the beginning. Yeah. He, he, I always say he's the face of the franchise. He is. Yeah. He he's is. the consist. People love consistency mm -hmm. and he was the consistency in that show. Yeah. And it was, yeah, it was, I mean, I am such good friends with both of them, Rachel, Lindsay, and Chris Harrison. And mm. when that all went down... What was it exactly? Well, he he basically had an interview with Rachel Lindsay where they were talking about some racism that was happening on the show. Mm -hmm. And Chris took the wrong side. It was the photo. It wasn't in a photo of one of the girls at a like college yeah. plantation yes. party or yes. something. And... Chris was taking the wrong side. Okay. And it did leave a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. And I was like, oh my, I can't believe he just put Rachel in that position. And like, it just was really sad overall. Yeah. Um, and so it was in like the height of cancel culture. Mm -hmm. And then with him being canceled and that show going into like having to do a quarantine season. Yeah. It's just, yeah. I mean, the ratings show it. It definitely dropped. Yeah. Um, and how did he handle... Because he was, like, immediately... I just remember him being, like, immediately canceled. Yeah. But I don't think it came from a place of... Well, he's not a bad human. No. He's not... I think he got caught up in some personal emotions. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, I can't speak for him, but I think that's what it is. And I think he has deep regret about it. Yeah. Um, from what I've heard, he does. So, yeah, it was just a really... Ugh. unfortunate situation that sucks he definitely didn't handle it the, the right way, way. and, and yeah. he knows that like yeah. he would say that mm -hmm. yeah wow yeah because it just so now the show though it's still going on yeah now i don't know it just kind of you know who knows maybe i'll be the next bachelorette no oh my gosh totally. that would be amazing <laughs> wait i'm dying would you do it girl no i could oh. not what? I just, what if they paid you like good money? Okay, well then we'll <laughs> maybe talk about it. Well, I've maybe. got a good entertainment no. lawyer. You can negotiate. That would be awesome. Here's the no. thing that the, I, I truly love the Bachelor franchise. I do. I, like when I was part of that family and hosting slash mentoring, whatever they said I was, I was like, I want to be here and I want to like help the leads. And I just loved being part of that family. And I yeah. loved interviewing people from the franchise. Um, but what they don't do properly is PR yeah. because they should be bringing in people, you know, we've, we all know everyone's there for Instagram anyways, bring in people who already have an Instagram following, make them the mm -hmm. lead, like spice it up a little, have, who can, have everybody come on my podcast, Nick's podcast, like any bachelor podcast. Don't be like, no, they have to get approval. Like let, let it go crazy. Exactly. Let the PR go nuts. They and try to because, contain it too much. Yes. And let it go rogue and let people get the show talking. Cre like you like drama, well, not you, but the show. Yeah. Look at what's happening right now with Vanderpump, Vanderpump. Rules. Guess what? I've never watched an episode of Vanderpump and no. I can't wait to tune in for the next season. <laughs> exactly. Make it messy. It's just going completely rogue, yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. And I wish they would, like, they, I always have to wait for approvals to get guests and, oh, well, we don't like what you said on this episode, so we might not have, you know, we'll wait to see, we'll see what we can do. And I'm like, get people talking. Exactly. It's going to help your show. No one wants this picture perfect image. No. Let them speak. Let them state their truth instead yeah. of this contrived, like, yeah. 
we need it to look this way, that way, whatever it may be. Yeah. And I love the show so much. I want them to do well. I want yeah. them to like get back up to the numbers they used to have. And there is a way of doing that. And it's not what's happening yeah. now. It's just letting people go rogue. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. No, I just think, honestly, I would be terrible on a show like that because I don't know. For, that is just a lot of drama. Like, I feel like I would look at some of these men and be like, but that's good. We need a bachelorette that would just cut it off. Yeah. You know, like, no, that's, and, but also too, that's going to be challenging. Like having that many people, because yeah. I do believe that it's possible to have feelings for multiple people. It at definitely one time. is. It definitely is possible, especially in that situation. So like, what do you do? You know, you enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, let's hope this can go on forever. And I don't ever have to make a decision. That's why it was the hardest thing ever is because I was enjoying it and I was also hurting people's feelings and that crushed me. Yeah. So I'm like, well, this is what I'm supposed to be doing and this is the format of the show and I can't just send people home because I know who it's going to be. You have to continue the show. Yeah. And I would, I mean, it's everyone knows that listens to my podcast or that follows me. I've lost so much hair. I was like a mess of a person because I was just so... I felt so much shame yeah. that I was hurting people's feelings. See, so when it came to like the overnight date, yeah. who were your people? Ben, Nick, and Sean. Oh, gosh. I know. Okay. And like, is it truly like a night? Like, do you, like, how does that happen? It's a night and then you have a night in between and then the next night and then a night in between. Okay. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's really just to, to be completely honest, it is the most important time of the whole show. It is when you actually get to know somebody. It's not just like bang town all night. <laughs> like it's truly like, what are your political beliefs? What are your religious beliefs? Like what are your debts? Like it's like yeah. real nitty gritty conversation for hours so between those three yeah which one did you like immediately x out and we're like okay based off conversations connections something this isn't gonna work honestly i i didn't i was so confused because i knew it was gonna be sean but i was confused between ben and nick because i knew how much sean hated nick yeah. that i wanted to let him go but I knew Ben just felt more of a friend to me. Yeah. But they really loved the Nick and Sean drama. Mm. So it was kind of hard. Yeah. So which one did you let go? Ben. Oh, so it got down to Nick and Sean. Plus they wanted Ben to be the bachelor. So. Okay. Yeah. Which I did too. I was like, he should be he the should. bachelor. He yeah. should. He's sweet. He should. <laughs> He's the best. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I know. They called him the perfect Ben. The perfect Ben. He's, yeah, that guy. He, and that was so much pressure for him to live up to. I felt so bad for him. Yeah. The perfect Ben. Oh, Honey. so when you, so how does it work? Obviously the guy's the one proposing. Yeah. So like, how do you pick the one, you know what I'm. So they like specifically for my season, I was like, please don't let Nick get down on one knee. I don't want to do that to him. Yeah. Um, and they're like, I actually think it's a good idea for you to let him because you got to let him have a chance to speak and say what he wants to say. Otherwise he'll probably hold on to like resentment and he'll want to say, it. and I was like, okay, sure. See, I don't believe in that. No, they were just doing it for they good TV. They were just TV. doing it for TV Yeah, because you had the right mindset of like out of respect and out yeah. of love. I don't want him to do that because yeah. I know I'm going to say no. Yeah. So it was those, oh gosh, that was so hard to do, but they both propose and then you have to say no or yes. <laughs> oh, I know. Gosh. <laughs> so, and then whenever you called off the engagement with Sean, does the franchise get the ring back? Yes. Oh, uh, actually, no, sorry. I what? still have that ring. Um, you still have it? Yeah, I do. But because if you, it's a contract. So if you break up before the two years with the contract, then you have to give the ring back. But we were together for three and a half years. So I got to keep the ring. Oh, so what are you going to do with I it? I have no idea. I want to like donate the money to charity or something. I just, I wanted to turn it into like good juju. That's, <laughs> see, you should. I know. That's a really good idea. I think so. Yeah. Wow. Or like find a really cool story 
between a couple and like oh yeah donate it you know what i mean have people think that's, i'm such a believer in energy do you think that hangs on to bad energy um actually yes because i always said that when my fiance and i broke up like we called up the engagement and then continued to date for three years yeah, after that's wild yeah wild i had always said if we were to get engaged again it could not be with the same ring no like could not no. be because it just symbolized like brokenness. Right. So I was like, no, it couldn't. Yeah. So I guess you're right on that. Yeah. I want to turn it into something like really good and positive. I like that. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to help you come up with an idea. Okay. That's like really that. good. Okay. That's really good. <laughs> so you don't have to give the ring back if you stay together. Right. For two, two years. years. Okay. Well, at least you walked away with something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't know what good it did for me, but I, I walked away yet. with a lot from that. A lot. I learned so much about myself. In so, those years. And then how did you and Jason meet? On my podcast. Really? Yeah. Because oh he had come my... off the show. And so I interviewed him. And then um, I was like, I'll never forget. I was crying before I interviewed him because I was like so sad about Sean. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. But he's just, he reminds me of a Canadian guy. And like, he's just such a, he's just a good guy. Well, he's from Buffalo, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So he's from Buffalo. It's still like that. Yeah, that like Buffalo boy, like honorary Canadian vibes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh my, so how long did y'all date before you got engaged? Um, Three years. Oh, that's a long time. Yeah. That's good though. Because see, I, I dated, I think it was like 11 months we dated before yeah. we got engaged. And then it's way too soon. Yeah, like, yeah it's still like honeymoon Yeah, you probably know what their favorite cereal is by Yeah, then. yeah. Well, that's cool. The cool thing about coming off The Bachelor and Bachelorette and the fact that Jason had two we had no shame in our game. Like we just talked right about like what we want out of like marriage, family, kids, money. Like yeah. we were so vulnerable with each other and able to just have those conversations because that's what you do on the show. And it's like no games, yeah. no time like to you play have games. to throw yeah. it out there. Yeah. Well, see, I think if there was more of that, there would be less time wasted. Yeah. Because I'm kind of that way. I'm like, hey, okay. So like, do we even align? Yeah. Like I want kids. I right. want to get married, but hey, I'm not getting married in this time frame or that. Right. You know, like you have to be. I think it's honest. great. I think it is so great to like, I'm so over people playing games, like throw yes. it all out there. And if they're going to, I don't know. I'm just like, I don't have time for it. I guess I'm a lot older than too. Like <laughs> if I ever had to date again, oh my God, no, thank you. It's I don't awful. think I would. It's awful. Process of like from when my ex and I called it off to now. Yeah. It's just. The dating game too. Oof. It's like I was on that app, Raya, Raya, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That too. Half the people on there should not even be on there. Oh, I know. Like I encountered a restaurant owner. He was not a restaurant owner. He Stop. lied. Stop. He was an assistant manager at Bar Taco. So. Bless. Oh <laughs> my yeah. gosh. I know. And I was like, okay. Not that that's um, a bad job. No. I'm just saying like, do, why, but are, why you are you lying? lying? I'm like, we're starting this off on a lie. Like, okay. Like anyone that's working, I'm like, way to go. Like at least you've got like a work right. ethic, willing to do whatever in order to like get by. Yeah. I commend that mad respect for it. Yeah. The restaurant industry is accounts for over 50% of like our workforce. Totally. And it's a tough job. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So like, own it. Yeah, exactly. But like yeah. you lied. Starting off on a dating app by lying. Literally. I was like, okay, this may be a psycho. Bro. Yeah, it was so bad. And yeah, then bad. I like went out on a few dates with this guy. We call him Wall Street. Um, okay. Mr. Mr. Wall Street. <laughs> went out on a couple dates with him and like great but then, which I mean, I don't blame him in all honesty. It was like everything with my parents yeah. was happening, going down. And he was like, you know, I, as much as I'm into you, like, I can't do this because of everything going on in your life. But wait, because of his job or so, because of what? Obviously, everyone's no stranger. Like, oh, my parents right. are bank fraud, tax evasion, whatever. Right. And he was like, I really don't want to sound like an asshole because I'm really into you. But, and like, I could see this. He was like, for the first time, because he's 40, he was 40. Yeah. He was like, for the first time, like, I could actually maybe see myself like settling down, doing all these things. And he was like, you're such a breath, like such a breath of fresh air. Yeah. I love that. Like you're opinionated and you're a hard worker yeah. and all these things. He was like, but 
when I go, like, there's he's got like a VC firm. So he's like, I yeah. there's all these regulations. He was like, and when you're asking people to give you hundreds of millions of dollars, they're looking into every aspect yeah, of that's your tough. life. Yeah. He was like, they're looking into every aspect of your life. And I tell him it, to leave his job then. <laughs> Yeah, just leave your job. They, so quit. Yeah, uh, if you're really into me. Yeah, quit. Um, quit your job that brings you in millions of dollars. Yeah. Just quit it. Screw so, it. Uh, it's, it's for love. Honestly, though, I had so much respect for him. Yeah, for being honest, that open and yeah. honest about it, and I understood it. Yeah. I'm like, this is your livelihood. Yeah, this it sucks. Like, yeah, that's I tough. Could have seen this going somewhere. Yeah, but I have mad respect for you for communicating yep. that like as much as you would love to do this yeah you just can't you know why savannah because he's 40 yeah see oh. and that's the thing it's like I we was, love an older man hey actually jason's four years younger than me i shouldn't say that <laughs> <laughs> but he's ahead of his time so, i'm dead yeah that's but, amazing but that's i mean jason actually had to leave his corporate america job because of my podcast and how open and crazy i was and yeah i like talked about i don't know how, how dirty we can get on this okay pod, but go for it i talked about dry humping him on my period and how he picked my nose and he was like yeah uh, his boss was like we can't have headlines about you like this <laughs> stop yeah yeah See, and that's, but Jason's an entrepreneur. Like he was just fine leaving that job yeah, and like, he's obviously gonna, had so much yeah. other things to, yeah. He's going to figure it out. Yeah. And that's so the that's, thing. It was, it kind of sucked. Cause yeah. like this guy, like he had flown here. We met on Raya. Yeah. And how do you say it? Raya, Raya. I have no idea. It's spelled R-A-Y-A. I've heard both. So I'm not sure. Okay. So Aaron, you say Raya, but Raya would be R-Y-A. Raya. Raya would be R Y A. What? Like the spelling. If yeah. you said Raya, I it would be R Y A. Raya. 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 He flew, he, he took the initiative to like fly here, yeah. get a hotel, yeah. which it's sad that I was like, oh, wow, that's amazing. You know, cause like, oh yeah, your bar is in hell. Yeah. <laughs> like bar is in hell. Yeah. Cause I'm used to people thinking like, oh, they're going to like stay with me. And right. I'm like, okay, wow. Okay. He got a hotel. Yeah. He like came, got a car service, picked me up. Like we had the best time. That's I nice. did bring my friends though, because I was like, I gotta make sure this guy's not gonna kill me. Oh, perfect. So I was like, first you. we'll do drinks yeah. with everyone. Yeah. And he like was great with my friends, Amazing. bought all of our stuff. Oh, I hate this for you. I know, right? Yeah, that's too bad. And then so like it was like a few weekends that he had come here. Yeah. To like hang out, do dinner, whatever. Was and this then, before everything happened or no, during? No, it was like during. Oh, okay. So he came in knowing. Yeah. He came that was the thing that sucked. Huh. Was like he came in knowing or maybe, honestly, I don't know. I think that just shows he really liked you though because he probably came in thinking, oh, this could be just fun. And then yeah. was like, oh shit, I have feelings. Yeah. yeah. And so then he was just like, I I feel like such an asshole saying this to you. Like, he was like, but it's just kind of my world. Like, yeah. he was like, they literally, when people yeah, are going to give you hundreds of millions of dollars, they're doing, they're looking at everything. Oh, yeah. Your personal life, stuff that you've tweeted, stuff yeah. that you've posted. Like, yeah. They look at everything. And I was just like, you know what? It sucks. It sucks, but I get Fair it. Enough. Yeah. And like, I wish you the oh, best. That is and like, too bad. we're still friends. Yeah. But I'm just like, it was so dating in today's day and age sucks. But especially with like that, I was like, who would have ever thought that? I know that's tough for you because now that's something that you have to like deal with. Yeah. Yeah. I'm and sorry. so, but dating in today's day and age just sucks in general. I like, can't even imagine. It's, I, nobody, no, everybody is putting their like best picture on. Everybody's yes. giving their best version of themselves and everyone's like trying to be better than the other person. Cause they know there's options and it's yes. just like becoming inauthentic. I don't know. I don't like it. It is. It is. So I'm really hope and pray that like you have a wedding soon. So Thanks. you don't ha ever have to deal with that again. <laughs> yeah. I honestly, if that ever happened, God forbid we broke up. I think I would be single for a, I would like go do, I don't know, like I'd 
somehow get pregnant just on my own <laughs> and then just have a baby on my own and be like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So do you want, you want kids? Oh yeah. Okay. And could you see yourself having kids before you guys got married? Totally. See, that's what I've said. I'm like yeah. the fear like of commitment in a marriage scares me more than like having a child. Yeah. I would, I'm, I do feel like I'm supposed to be a mom. Like I, yeah. I don't feel like that because people are telling me it. Like I feel in my soul, I'm supposed to be one. Yeah. Yeah. And I've got my eggs frozen, so I've got a little time. Oh, see, that's great. <laughs> yeah. I say, like, I say that I'm going to do that you just should. because I'm like, it's an insurance policy. You should absolutely. And like yesterday. Yeah. Every year your egg count goes see, down. See, and too, I have endometriosis like oh, yeah. really bad. Oh, so I'm sorry. my doctor was like a normal woman, like your yeah. eggs decrease by half at 30. Yeah. But since you have endometriosis, it like decreases by another half. Oh my gosh, you should. Yeah, so eggs. I know. Yeah. So I really need to. Yeah. But also, I get scared because I have a good friend who she was in her 30s. She was like, okay, I got to freeze my eggs. Yeah. She froze her eggs and literally got pregnant like right after. That's great. But she didn't want to get pregnant. Oh. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. But that, well, when she clearly wasn't using protection then, <laughs> it's not the egg's fault. <laughs> <laughs> but don't they say your risk of getting pregnant is like a much higher after a retrieval because of all the oh maybe yeah yeah i definitely but they told us don't have sex yeah so she should have listened yeah <laughs> so i'm assuming you did not have sex <laughs> no i waited i i remember being like this because yeah you're right i do think that's a fact wait where did you where were you going with that i remember being like this like i remember i remember being like we can't have sex right now <laughs> because we will get pregnant. <laughs> and, and how long was that? I don't remember. I think like three weeks. Really? Yeah, I think so. Oh, god. I could be talking out of my ass right now. This is just, this <laughs> was, just this was like five years ago, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm dead. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I really should definitely freeze my eggs. Yeah. Because if I, yeah. If, if anyone, I know it's so expensive too. Like if you can, you should. Yeah. yeah. 100, and that's the thing too. And that's what's sad though, is a lot of women who can't afford to do it. I know. It's like, why aren't we doing, offering something? Oh, don't get me started on that. Because there are <laughs> like some big corporations that are great with that, that will actually pay for that. I know. To and they should. And they yeah. absolutely should. Because I want to say maybe Apple is one of them. I think so. Apple pays for it because yeah. I have a friend, one of my good friends, her sister works for Apple. Yeah. And I think she got it done because they That's pay awesome. for it. Yeah. That's really cool. I, I think every company should do that if they can. Yeah. Well, we know there's definitely a difference in... <laughs> Men and women in companies, so. <laughs> well, but Unlocked will unlock to support. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> <Yeah>. Literally. <laughs> oh, I'm dead. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love how we went down, like, a rabbit hole of literally everything. Everything. We started with an apology, then down the Raya, Raya rabbit hole. Bachelor, kids, bachelorette, bachelor. exes, dating. That's. Eggs. Yeah, eggs. <laughs> eggs. Freeze them if you can. Yeah, we Maybe literally we need went... to go on Dancing with the Stars. Oh, my God. I have no rhythm. Oh, None. that's even better. You would learn. <laughs> even I would People learn. love to root for the underdog. Yeah. Yeah. I, hey, you know what? I would do it. I would do you it. You should. I loved it. It was everything. You were on. I remember that and you were so good. I won. <laughs> you were so good. <laughs> well, I grew up dancing though, so I was kind of. Well, see, that's not fair. But honestly, I had never ballroom danced and yeah. that is a whole other beast. Well, and too, isn't the training insane? It's insane. Like, isn't it like emotionally just like... Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. It was, it was actually harder than being The Bachelorette. Really? Yeah. And so they can like teach you from the ground up. Yeah. Okay. And they will. I think I could do that. Yeah, I think you should. I actually think you should. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to text my friend you who's should. the casting director of that. Oh my gosh, I would do it. Because that's... You'd be a good guest on that. A good star. And too, because I just... I actually, no holy filter. crap, I'm surprised they haven't come to you for that. There was discussions at one time, but I don't... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need and to two, though, now we're about to start back filming a new show. So that's going to be like... I feel uh, like that could be a good storyline, too. Great. It'd be great. Like, that would, okay, we're connecting. Yeah, Y'all, this is happening. We got to know I'm what I'm putting it out there. Are. I Because I cannot dance. That's great. I like, love when people can't dance. And I then can't they like sway. And then you... Come on. <laughs> And then you, what about like if you have a glass of wine? Can you? 
I mean, I, well, yeah, at that point, then, like, you never know what's going to happen. I took a tequila shot once before I went out there and did my dance. Did you? Yeah. See, sometimes you just need it. it. Like, sometimes <laughs> yeah. you're just like, okay, something's got to come over I me. actually have a feeling you're going to go on. Yeah. Okay. I like this feeling. We're putting it into the universe. Yeah. Also, too, I do want to touch on your wine. Oh, yeah. I brought one for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do you have Spade it? Spade and Sparrows. Yes. I don't know. Okay. Oh, there it is. Yes. So your Spade wine. Spade and Sparrows. It's the cutest packaging. Like, absolutely amazing. I'm obsessed with it. And it's in Target, right? So it's in Target in Texas okay. and Georgia right now. And we're trying okay. to go national. I oh, yes. told Target, the wine buyer, that I would get a tattoo of the Target logo on me if we went national. Stop. Yeah. That's what got their attention. So then we got into Texas and then we really blew it out of the water because everyone who, I call them my big wine guys. Yeah. Um, or people who listen to the podcast, I call them vinos. They show up. Really? Yes. I swear. I wish I could pay all of them because they're like my little marketing. I don't know. Like they just go out and market for me and they're amazing and they show up and they support. And so we did bottle signings and, um, hopefully Florida is next. That's amazing. And it's in like local grocery or grocery, um, like wine shops in Nashville and a okay. couple other spots. And then it's all online as well. You can buy it. That's amazing. And how did this come about? Oh, so I worked in the restaurant business for 11 years uh -huh. and I fell in love with winemaking, like the process, learning about it, going to vi uh, vineyards. And uh, I had to be trained under a sommelier. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had to train servers when I became a manager on um, wine knowledge. And so I loved it. And then on Bachelor and Bachelorette, people joked that a wine glass was my accessory. Like girls would have like a bag or like something else. And I'd always have a glass of wine. And so when I came off and had like this wine centric podcast off the vine, I was like, I need to make my own wine label because so many wine brands were coming to me that had really good offers. But I was like, I want to create my own and like be able yeah. to stand by it and do what I want and be my own boss there. For and sure. so I made my own. That is amazing. I love that. Yeah, it's so fun. I'm really proud of it. And too, Spade just and like a woman-owned business. Everyone knows I'm a huge advocate for that. It's really fun. Not it's, enough women. I'm telling you, it was way harder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it is. People oh. don't realize how hard just starting a business is oh and creating gosh. it from the ground up. Especially when the the like wine industry is yeah. filled by like older men yeah. who don't understand what we're doing, like what our brand initiative is. Like they're yeah. like, huh? Um and so it's been like a grind, but it's so fun. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, you know what? I'm so proud of you. Thank I you. I can't wait to try it. Thank you. We have um, Pinot Grigio, Rosé, Cab, and a Pinot Noir. Wow. Yeah. Y'all, I'm... I, let me just say, I'm just happy we, I got my apology out of the way very early on. <laughs> I hate that you were hanging on to that. I was, I was just like hanging on. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> she probably hates me. This no. Is yeah. So thank you for coming on. You thank are freaking awesome. Thanks for having me. No, of course. Mm -hmm. And y'all, we're going to do a little swap. A little swap Rooney. So I'm going to be on Caitlin's podcast off the vine and God only knows where that is going to lead. Because <laughs> yeah. I have a feeling it's going to be a little more inappropriate. So, well, God help maybe me. you should crack this wine. <laughs>